Google pulls a conference out of crime-ridden San Francisco? Tell me it isn't so. Yep, got one more big conference that has said, mm, no, all those needles and poop and homelessness and are people getting their cars broken into, airport disaster. Nah, we're going to go elsewhere. We're going to take our conference anywhere other than San Francisco. Let's get into it. Here we go. Google is moving a technology conference out of San Francisco as the city struggles with high crime and rampant drug use. You know, what's so funny is that uh, so much is being done to kind of clean the city up. You've got the uh, federal building, they, you know, put up a new fence. They told their employees to work from home because it's not safe. They're fencing it. They've got 10 cars on the street. They're just doing all these stopgap measures, to try and clean the city up because Things are going in the wrong direction. The mayor is just screaming for more arrests. Nobody's going into treatment, so nothing's really going to happen. And the criminal activity, you're not really throwing anybody in jail or anybody in prison for long periods of time. So why wouldn't this just keep going? Google knows it. They're like, no, nah, next year, I don't think so. The company will host its Google Cloud Next Conference in Las Vegas next year. So you want to go to San Fran and dodge human fecal matter on the sidewalk or you you want to go walk down the strip and see what's going on in Vegas. I mean, that's not a tough call, right? Google held the conference at the city's Moscone Center last week, as it had from 2017 to 2018, for the first time since the beginning of the COVID-19 pandemic. It had planned to host the 2024 iteration of the conference in San Francisco as well, but it canceled the booking in July. Google declined to give San Francisco Gate a specific reason for pulling the conference out of San Francisco. They don't even need to, do they? You're just like, well, all the standard reasons, all the normal stuff going on, don't really blame them. And this is something that, you know, since pandemic times, we have been talking about, you know, since I've been podcasting, people have, you know, called and, you know, basically stated, you know, I've, I've worked with the business tourism. I've worked with the conventions, getting, you know, take, putting my business into a city. I just, I won't consider Seattle. I won't consider Portland. I won't consider San Fran. That's, this is all the usual stuff because people don't want to bring their employees to a city where they got to deal with just a whole bunch of shenanigans. They don't want to do that. Human, human poop on the sidewalk? Nobody wants to deal with that, right? Having their car broken into? Not really sure. Hey, am I able to walk from the hotel to this restaurant over here? Am I able to do that without getting accosted? We don't really know. So one of the big uh, right now dream forces going on at the same um, convention center as I just talked about. And it'll be interesting. That's it's one of the Dreamforce is one of the big, big conventions. I think it brings like ninety, ninety million dollars into the economy in a very short period of you know a handful of days in a week, something like that. But you do have conventions still going on, and I'm really curious the conventions that are being held in 2023. Are they coming back in 2024? Because if you have options, as any business does. If you have options, you're going to go elsewhere. You're going to go to Vegas? Probably, right? I mean, why wouldn't you? $1.7 trillion company's decision comes as dozens of other businesses have scaled back their operations in San Francisco as the city deals with widespread crime, homelessness, and drug use. Between 2020 and 2022, homicides increased 40%. And fentanyl deaths have also spiked. None of these are shocking numbers. San Francisco, the one thing I will say is on a actual number, their violent crime, their murders are pretty, pretty in line with the city its size, even if they're not a little bit less than other cities. But I think it's property crime, it's drug-related crime, it's assaults, it's that kind of thing that are really, really impacting convention business because nobody wants to spend their company's budget on this kind of ridiculousness. They just, it, it's a no go. Like, all right, why would I put my people through that? Why would I put vendors through that? Why would I put all these folks through that? Resulting in a number of companies pulling events, headquarters, and office space out of San Francisco. I mean, we're not even talking about, you know, the, the general doom loop 
that San Francisco is facing because of the whole work from home, massive amounts of 23 million square feet of vacant office space, 31, 32% vacancy rate. And, you know, a city budget that's just going to have a massive, massive hole in it. And what's going to happen? What's going to happen? Things aren't going to get better. When you've got a massive budget deficit, things moving forward the next couple of years, businesses are going to pull out. Businesses are just going to say, yeah, no can do. All right, let's head to Vegas, folks. Hey, let's go to Portland. Now, they're not saying that, but I mean, you know, why not? Yeah. Crazy, right? Last week, Salesforce CEO Mark Benioff said his company may pull its massive dream force. That's what I'm talking about. That's going on right now as I record this. I think they started on the 11th yesterday, which was a Monday. They've got their massive dream force going on. That's a big, big event. Conference out of the city. So the, the Salesforce is CEO. If you don't know what Salesforce is, it is a it's a CRM system. It's a you know, how you keep track of your clients, how you keep track of information. It's your ability to track basically your business contacts, and um, it, it's it's a it's an in a fully integrated you know, calendar, all kinds of stuff, notifications. It's software that runs CRM systems, right? And so they've got this big convention called Dreamforce, and they're talking about pulling it out, citing public safety concerns. Well, when the federal building, when federal government basically says, yeah, guys, don't come to work, it ain't safe. And that's the Nancy Pelosi federal building. It's not safe. When malls, entire malls are being shut down. Yeah, yeah, we can't really make a go of it. There's not enough people coming in. Because they don't want to deal with what we just talked about here, the safety concerns. One of my podcasts was the Westfield Mall in uh, in San Francisco Center. It had a 400% increase in human excrement incidents on the elevator. So you got all these homeless folks who can't quite make it to the restrooms inside if they happen to be in the area. So they just take a dump in the elevator and call it good. All right. Well, you know, not much to wipe with, but yeah, you know, just take a dump on the elevator and get off. And you know, that's what we're doing at San Fran. It's what we're doing. So the mall couldn't make it right. And the mall owners said, yeah, we don't want to deal with this anymore. Literally gave the keys back to the lender and said, Hey, good luck with this. All right, you guys enjoy. Enjoy your mall. Have fun. And it's got half of the half of the stores have left, you know, something like that. Benioff said that this year's conference will inject 57 million into the downtown economy. Okay, it's 57 million. Huge number. Big number. But businesses are saying, "Ah, eh, moving forward, maybe not so much." Old Navy closed its flagship store in San Francisco, and Whole Foods and Nordstrom have also closed locations in the city. Uber and Airbnb have been trying to abandon their offices in San Francisco, as have many other businesses, leading to an almost a third of all office space in the city sitting empty. I, 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 I showed a couple of uh, videos by Metal Leo. He's a guy that just goes out with his camera or his phone, I'm not sure, and just literally walks some of these areas that we're talking about walks these malls, walks these downtown areas of the financial district in San Francisco and shows, oh yeah, that building used to be that. Now it's empty. You've got entire streets with street level retail in office space that's just flat empty. There's nobody there and there's nobody walking around. The financial district where all the you know big office complexes are is a ghost town. And that's because everybody went to work from home and they don't want to come back until street conditions are better. To, they don't want to come back to a city that's been so impacted by the whole work from home deal. And a lot of that has to do in, in San Francisco, Portland, and Seattle. Seattle has also been heavily impacted by the same exact set of circumstances, which is the technology that allowed everybody to work from home during the pandemic, oftentimes it's developed in Seattle. It's developed in San Francisco. So all the companies that are here and in San Fran and in a lot of these tech cities, they've recognized, well, we don't really have to have all this office space. So moving forward, 
I think office space is one of those things where, you know, you go through a pandemic and you know, some things kind of get dented up, but you, they'll make it, you know, you slap a little Bondo on there. It'll be fine. We'll make it go. But commercial office space post pandemic, I think in the downtown cores is a real kiss of death. It's a real kiss of death because you got to have a lot of businesses that have big demand for office space. And that's even on companies that say, all right, we need you in the office three days a week because that's become kind of the big, all right, can we get our employees to the office three days a week? Can we, can we get them there three days? We're not talking five, talking trace, right? Three. Remember when it used to be, you know, five day work week was pretty normal. And sometimes you go in on Saturday and if you had to, you work right through the week and you just go again. I mean, if business is good and you're self-employed, eat what you kill, then you just go and you just keep going. And that's how you make it work. Now we're down to, I don't really want to go into the office on like Monday. I don't really want to go in on Friday. I want a four-day weekend because, you know, my work-life balance. My dad has always said, fuck work-life fuck work balance. Yeah, you don't need it. It's not necessary. You might want it. But you don't, you don't really need that. It's not necessary. Work as much as you want. And if you don't want to work, then you're just going to be poor and you're going to leave nothing to your family. Okay. All right. I've always been okay with that. So if you, if you want to work around the clock, I'm not saying it's healthy, but productivity wise, I don't know how the United States is going to compare to all these other countries like China, where they're just working around the clock, right? Productivity versus work-life balance. Yeah. And there's something to be said for, for some work-life balance. I can't say that that's not uh, something that you know comes to my mind all the time, but you've got a situation where this work from home deal has really impacted downtown. And on top of that, San Francisco is just so liberal and ah, drugs are good. It's fine. Do your thing. And then all of a sudden, oh man, we got conferences coming. We've got APEC coming, which is the Asia Pacific Economic Conference. That's a big one. We need to get cleaned up here. We need to polish the turd. We need to get going. Kind of like Seattle did for the All-Star Game and a um, couple of concerts and you know Taylor Swift. All right. Scooch the homeless people away from these venues. Get it cleaned up so we look good, so we don't look bad on, you know, on uh, you know, worldwide TV, it's kind of like when the Olympics come to whatever town that has a uh, a homelessness issue, right? All right, let's get this cleaned up. I mean, don't care where you put them, just don't have them anywhere close to where a TV camera is going to be. It'll be all good. The optics are with us, right? But San Francisco, the optics are such that the vast majority of big companies are saying, we're probably not going to bring our convention dollars here on an ongoing basis because we do have options. Now, San Francisco used to be, you know, one of the leading, it, and it still is a leading tech city, right? That's not going to go away. But the structure of how folks, you know, lead conventions and then office space, businesses needing headquarters, just having a, having location in California in general from a tax liability standpoint is just an absolute loser. So you got to have the ability to draw from employment. You know, you got to have the ability to draw from the community as a big pull to have it make sense to have your business there. It's that whole being able to pull from whatever other companies are laying off or, you know, you've just, you've got a really good pool there, just like Seattle has a good tech pool. And so businesses come here because they can poach, you know, employees and make a go of it. Whereas if you're in somewhere in Nebraska, you may not have that same pool. You just don't have that business environment there, right? So more and more companies are saying ixnay to the San Francisco A for the conventions A, right? I mean, and this is not shocking. It's, I mean, it, it, you know, it's it's just, just obvious. It, you can't have street conditions like that and expect people to bring their, you know, millions of dollars, their $57 million into the downtown economy and ignore all the shenanigans that are what folks in San Francisco deal with on a daily basis. The poop emoji map. I mean, what more do you need to say? All right. That's it for me on this one. Thanks so much for being here. I'll catch up with you in the next one. Bye for now.